This isn't flying. This is falling with style. Man, I gotta tell you, Archfiend at three is definitely too much power for one man to yield. What's going on guys? Logan JYA here and as promised, we've got Infernity with triple Archfiend here in 2024. Now while I do believe that this build is one of the most high ceiling Infernity deck lists that you can choose to play, I don't know if I'm even capable of doing it justice. We're gonna have a test hand at the tail end of it that shows you just a glimpse of the power of what this deck can do. I'm also gonna have a replay linked in the description down below that pushes it even further beyond. But again, guys, the only way to truly master Infernity is to practice it for hours and hours and hours. And then and only then will you have all of those combo lines down pat. But without further ado, let's get into it. All right, everybody, I've been keeping you waiting long enough. It's time to dive into the sought after Infernity deck profile for 2024. We welcome back three Archfiend with open arms. Now, I'm going to flag this for you all. This is a very challenging deck to play, so much so that even I still struggle to go through the combos 100% clean. But with enough time and enough practice, you too can become an Infernity Master. Huge shout out and thank you to Brom Poke and my boy Yoke Man, who always are helping me out on the Infernity front. Let's get into it. All right, homies, we welcome him back. There he is, Triple Archfiend. For the first time in forever, or really since 2014, Archfiend is back at three, and it does help in a build like this. And you're gonna see why a little bit later on, why it is worth it to play all three. In some other builds, you might actually be better off only playing two, but this one in particular, we're rocking with all three. Moving on from there, we got two copies of the Infernity Necromancer for your Reborn Magic. Follow that up with the one of Infernity names. We've got one Patriarch one Mirage, and one Sage. And that's going to be it for our Infernity package, actually. Sage is serving tr double or triple duty, if you think about it as the tuner. Mirage, we actually have the ability to recur him in some interesting ways. And Patriarch is a very important extender for your combos. Now we got a normal summon for this deck and a sub engine, that being our friend Tour Guide. Tour Guide is one card Cherubini, which gives you instant access to your Archfiend. Follow that up with the cards that go along with it, the Fiendish Rhino Warrior, along with the Archfiend Eris, and finally the Stygian Street Patrol. All of these guys are actually one-ofs in this build. You want to try and access them through, I guess you could say, unconventional means, whether it be using Rhino to send Stygian or Eris off of Cherubini's effect, or sending them off of one of our continuous spell cards, you are going to find ways into them. Or you're going to hard draw Archfiend and you're going to summon them out in some other interesting ways. And one of those interesting ways is, of course, so apparently Joshua Schmidt's not a fan of this engine. Well, guess what? We're playing it anyway. We got triple of the bike, triple of the Wakushi, one copy of Mr. Big Bang Key, the big brick, one soul horn, and one of the soul Gaia to round out our Super Heavy Samurai package, right? So this is a pretty good package to play in Fernity because Pendulum Summoning Out Archfiend is insane. A free copy of Verone is pretty insane. So even if you're not a fan of the engine at large, you can cut it 100% and fill these slots with maybe additional engine pieces like more Street Patrol. You could jack up your copies of Mirage or Necromancer and obviously play a heck of a lot more power spells. But in this build, again, just having that added bonus of the Pendulum Southern or the safety net of the bike is super duper helpful. And of course, the Soul Horns and the Wakushi go together for another special little fun trick that we can do with them as well. Now, another package, this one, this one again, optional. It's optional, but it's certainly nice to have. And you all saw it in my Infernity build, excuse me, in the Orcus build, we are playing the Horus package, the Yamsetis, and the Happy. Same deal as in Orcus. It's literally the exact same package, but in this deck, it really is to empty out your hand. The whole idea here is that Gold Sark is another way to get all of those cards out of hand so you can resolve your Infernity. It's that simple. So we do play the Horus package, but again, if you wanted to, you could cut that for more power spells or a different sub engine. Another sub engine that works in this deck is Terror Top, all right? You could do the Terror Top package, and this is more access to Cherubini, Levier, in case you didn't want to play the Horus cards. But I'm not playing these in this build, not playing them in here. I'm just saying that that's something you could do if you didn't want to play the Horus cards. All right, moving on to our Infernity spells. We got the one beautiful copy of Launcher. Hopefully, this is the next one that comes to three, and then we'll have infinite loops for life. 
Then we've got two copies of Launcher's Cousin. I refuse to call it by that name. We're going to call it by Return of the Reaper. That's what's called in the OCG. That's what it'll always be called to me. We're playing two of it, Free Monster Reborn or Return from Banish, or Empty Out Your Hand. A cool little side note about this card, you don't have to have no cards in your hand to activate it. I said that in kind of a weird way, but you get what I'm trying to say. You can resolve this even if you have cards in your hand, so it's good to know. Got two copies of the King Sar to go with our Horus package. Empty out that hand. And then triple copies of Void Apocalypse. Another way to empty out the hand and line up your fiends. Foolish burialing them. Giving you access to Archfiend if you send Eris. Or giving you the Stygian Street Patrol to give you another means of special summoning Archfiend. And then we play another one of spell being Foolish Burial. And World Legacy Suck Session to go with one of our friends in the extra deck. I bet you can guess who she is. And then finally we've got our Infernity Trap Card Package. Two copies of Barrier. One copy of Break. All right, I'm going to swap this one. Yes, I know I only have one secret. I missed it. There was a good deal to grab a, a play set of the secrets, and I missed it. But that's all right. We're rocking on with this package. It's all you need. You could play more if you wanted to, but uh, they can end up being bricky. So this is the bare minimum you need, and I think it's more than enough to win when you have all of them guaranteed set up. So that's everything for the main deck. Let's go through the extra deck. Starting things off, we've got the one copy of Cherubini Weenie. Very, very strong. I mentioned, again, the Foolish Burial, and this is one of your main means of accessing Archfiend. We also got the one copy of the Yama. Yama you make with two fiends, and the majority of your Infernities are fiends, and you can use your Barone to pop your own cards and trigger this card's effect in Grave to re-summon back either Archfiend or Necromancer, whatever you need, to finish off your combo. It's also pretty good if you end up getting interrupted, right? So if you have another means of proccing it, it is a pretty solid card. And outside of that, it's kind of like a generic Link 2 middle piece, I guess you could say and those are pretty important to have. Moving on, we got the one copy of Little Knight. Seldom will you ever end on this card. If you end on this card, it's because you got hand-trapped a little bit too much, but ideally you don't want to end on it. We got the Nightmare Package of Cerberus and Phoenix to go along with our friend Trigate Wizard, which is a key piece of the end board piece. I know people aren't a big fan of this build of Infernity, but Link Climb Infernity is the strongest way to play the deck, in my opinion. Of course, you can do more Synchro Heavy variants, you can do the FTK variants, there's a ton of ways to play the deck. But this is one that I think is just the most fun to show in a video like this. And then we've got a copy of Appalosa for those big negates. This is how we get upwards of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine negates on an end board. We've got the World Sea Dragon's Atlantis. This card's insane for resetting your Inferni Archfiends and your Necromancers and your Barone too. So you can get another free pop in case you need to clear out your back row. So you have a Gold Sark back there and you've also got Pen Scales up. You might want to reset that Barone's effect so you can nuke off that Gold Sark or you can nuke off your Pen Scale depending on whichever one you prefer to keep. Um, honestly, hit or miss, I probably want to keep the Gold Sark instead of the Pen Scales if we're being honest after your combo is done because say, for God forbid, if somehow your unbeatable board gets broken, uh, it's probably better off to have the Horse Monsters coming back than having the live pen skills for whatever you top deck, right? Moving on, one copy of Sarah Yuja Skulldred. Insane. Oh, we used to play three of this, then we're back down to two. Now we're only playing one copy of this card, but that's all you really need. Um, you really shouldn't find yourself looking for additional copies of Sarah Yuja if you are. You did something wrong. You did it more wrong than I usually do. Then we got the one copy of Barone. Again, very important with your super heavies, but you can also make it with just Infernity cards. That's where Sage comes in. In fact, if you have Sage and Double Necromancer on field, turn that off into our friend Ax Axel Synchro Dragon or AKA Ass Dragon, you know? That's the acronym, YouTube, I'm not swearing, that's what it's called. Yes, this card is quite diabolical, so it just gives you easy, instant access to that Barone. And then we got the Cyframe Lord Omega. Again, um, I struggle sometimes to put up the full power end board. Again, when I work with Brahim, he really helps coach me through uh, the steps when I'm messing things up. So I'll usually end my board with additional follow-up, like an extra copy of the creepy little you-know-what, or a, a, a Yama Stone Grave. Maybe I, I basically, I miss a point to make the Omega sometimes, but regardless, it is still pretty doable. It's really doable. And if you end on the full nut end board, you've got the Barone locked and loaded and one card taken out of your opponent's hand with the Omega. Follow that up, we've got the copy of Ib, Ib for searching out the World Legacy Succession. You make it with the Soul Horn and the Wakushi and the searches off your World Legacy Succession, or you can make it with Necromancer and Sage. Then we've got the one Levier, follow that up with the one Dugaris, very important. And finally, for the Horus cards, we have the one Zombie Vampire. It's just another way to reach for Archfiend if you really need to. The one thing I will say, though, is if you have the Super Heavy cards in hand and the Horus package, start with the Super Heavies, because in case you Miller Spell or Trap off of the Vampire Lord, you might be bricking the other half of the engine. All right, there we go. Now, I'm going to speed through this side deck, because, again, it's kind of like 
uh, this is a this is a tricky uh, deck to play. It's kind of like win the die roll, win the match type deal. Uh, otherwise, if you're not doing so and you're not resolving your full combo, it, it can struggle to go second. But if you get things going in the right direction, you'd be surprised how many boards you can push through with just Infernity uh, engine cards. Regardless, side deck, one Robo Opportunista, because hey, it's at one, we like to play it. Triple copies of the Forbidden Droplets, and mind you, when you're bringing in these spell cards, more often times than not, you're citing in nine cards, okay? You hear me? Nine cards, you're taking out the super heavy package entirely for things like the Droplets, the Robo Opportunista, double copies of Lightning Storm going along with a Harpy's Feather Duster for blowing out those back row matchups. We've got the Mind Control, the Change of Heart, the Triple Tactics Talent, the beautiful Dark Ruler No More, the Herald of the Abyss, as well as the evenly matched, and I'm sure you see where this is going, they pair with our double copies of Triple Tactics Thrust. Of course, you could jack this up to three. If you're able to get your hands on three copies of Thrust, not too bad either. But that's everything for the side and for the profile. I'm so sorry it took me so long to get this to you guys, but now we are going to do a test hand. Pray for me, everybody. Let's get into it. All right, everyone, let's dive into one of the most challenging combo decks of all time. We're doing the test hand for Infernity. Together, let's walk through what peak combo centricity in Yu-Gi-Oh! really looks like. Our opening hand, we got Archfiend, we got the Soul Horn, we got Tour Guide, we got Bike, and we got Stygian Street Patrol. A monster-filled hand in Infernity? What the heck are we gonna do? I think we might be able to make this one happen, especially since we got the bike locked and loaded. So we're gonna start things off with that, and that's gonna grab us Wakushi. All right, Joshua Smitch, cringe all you want, brother. We're gonna start off with Wakushi, use its effect, grab ourselves the Big Brick Banky, use Banky's effect to search. That's gonna grab the Soul Gaia Booster. Now this is where things already get a little bit awkward because normally I would just go straight for the Barone and play around Nibiru because it would be our fifth summon. But if we don't wanna have a monster stuck in our hand when we go for our Pendulum Summon or have to Normal Summon this instead of Normal Summoning the Tour Guide, we're gonna have to go for this first. So I'm gonna actually Special Summon the Soul Horns and we are still gonna have our live Pen Scales before committing into Nibiru range. Not a problem, all right guys, trust me. So we're gonna go use the Wakushi and the Soul Gaia turn those off into the Ass Dragon, and I'm just gonna put the Ass Dragon on field real quick, but you know what it's gonna do. It's gonna bring back that bike from the graveyard, and you take these two and turn them straight off into your safety net, that being our friend Barone over here on the side. So we're pretty much set to rock and roll, ready to go, and we've got a very strong setup from the get-go. We don't even need to search another Archfiend off of this, uh, this tour guide, but we're still gonna use it. We're gonna normal summon that tour guide, use its effect, grab off the Necromancer, turn these two off, Go for Cherubini on the top, use Cherubini's effect for the free Foolish Burial of a level three. I'm gonna send that Rhino Warrior and then we can search another copy of Archfiend for free by sending the Eris first. So we'll send Eris, Eris grabs Archfiend, and look at how much space we have left on our board. We literally have just the amount of space needed to Pendulum Summon out our entire hand. Look at how goofy this is gonna be. So we go one, two, three, three monsters summoned from a hand, two of them being Archfiends. I'll use Archfiend's effect to search here, and I'll just grab Necromancer for the sake of sake, since the next thing we can do here is make our Sarayuja Skull Dread, and we can put our Stygian Street Patrol immediately into the graveyard. It doesn't matter which monsters we make it with. I'm actually not going to go for the draw effect. We're just trying to link up right now. So I'll go for Sarayuja. I'll use Sarayuja's effect to special, bring out that Necromancer. Use Necromancer's effect to summon back Archfiend from Grave once again. We can use Archfiend's effect to search. This time around, I'll go for the Launcher. Next, I'll overlay these two, or Dugaris, excuse me. Use Dugaris' effect to attach two. I'm gonna use a little Reckless here just to bring back the Archfiend immediately because we've already got so much advantage. It doesn't really matter at this point. I'll use it to grab Sage so we have our level two tuner on lock, and we'll use the Launcher's effect to pitch the Sage from hand to grave. Now to make a little bit more room, I'm gonna take these two guys, turn them off, go for the Yama. It's pretty much a free summon at this point just to make room, and then I can tag off the Sarayuja Skull Dread go for the World Sea Dragon's Atlantis. I'm just using this right now. It would summon up here. It blinks everything off the board. Everything comes back, and then that'll make our Necromancer live again. We're in a situation, again, it's pretty obvious here. We have so much advantage, and we're gonna be able to go to town like crazy that, honestly, it doesn't matter how I do it. But right now, I'm just gonna go for the three-piece Apollos on the top. Next, we can use that Necromancer's effect since it's live once again. I'll use that to bring back Archfiend. Archfiend effect to search. This time, I'll grab Patriarch. Special Summon the Patriarch since the only card in our hand. And then I'm going to go for the Little Knight right here just as a mid-piece. Next I'll use Launcher again, pitch it off, go for Necromancer and for Archfiend. Archfiend Effect to Search. Here off of Archfiend I will grab a Barrier. Next I'll take these two, go for the Trigate Wizard, 
Other necromancers effect that we haven't used yet, bring back Archfiend, Archfiend effect search once more. Here, I'll grab a copy of Return of the Reaper. Next, Link 2. Turn these two off into Nightmare Phoenix. Then I'll use the creepy little you-know-what. Summon back Archfiend one more time. Archfiend effect to search. Grab another copy of Barrier. Link these two off. Summon out the Nightmare Cerberus. And then finally, you can use Barone's effect. Pop off the Big Bang Key. And since we popped the Big Bang Key, we can trigger Yama Engrave. Banish this. Summon back Archfiend. And then Archfiend Effect will search for the final time, getting us our last copy of Infernity Break. Setting up the full board, we got Apo for three, Trigate, all the full back row of Negates, and the Barone Effect locked and loaded. Now, mind you, I definitely did not do this the best way. I was actually keeping my search targets on the side right now, and I did skip over Mirage throughout the combo, as well as our Stygian Street Patrol. So I guarantee you, there is definitely a way to go for the uh, Omega on top of this as well. But I am still working my way through how these combos work and doing them optimally, and every hand is different. I know the thing I struggle with most when it comes to this deck is playing it out optimally. So again, guys, if you wanna master Infernity, in 2024 with the full power of Archfiend at your disposal, what you have to do is listen to me now. You're gonna have to sit down and practice for hours and hours and hours to get all those plays together. Even after doing that right now, I am still so sketchy on what the best way is to formulate your end board in the most peak perfect design. But I assure you that together, the more we practice, the better we can do. And this is still an insane end board. We got three, four, five, six, seven, eight negates locked and loaded. And again, it could be as high as nine negates with the Omega Banish, as long as you're doing things optimally. But the way you can look at it this way, we've got some follow-up pretty much guaranteed locked and loaded, and it's going to be pretty hard to lose this match. But that's everything I got today for this video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed. And again, give the build a try. I know I didn't do it complete justice this time around, but I swear to God, guys, triple arch Fiend is too much power for any one man to wield. So give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Logan JYA signing off for a great day. I'll see you beautiful people later. Peace.